My name is Henrik Zetterberg. I'm a professor of neurochemistry at the University of Gothenburg and at University College London. My speciality is fluid biomarkers for Alzheimer's disease and other neurodegenerative dementias. I must say I'm very happy with the situation we are in now that we have uh, reference uh, standard tests that are extremely well validated. PET is validated against neuropathology and CSF is validated to some extent against neuropathology and against PET. So th these are sort of our gold standard tests. And now we have plasma biomarkers that are getting more and more validated against PET and CSF. I think we will uh, use plasma biomarkers only when we get results back that are clearly abnormal or clearly normal. This is exactly where I think this, uh, the, 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 we could see that plasma tests could replace CSF and amyloid uh, and, and PET flow. Uh, so that is really, that is really, uh, that, that I think one could skip doing additional, uh, in the future I think it will become clear that one doesn't need the other tests. Uh, in gray zone uh, uh, patient, the patients with gray zone results, or perhaps patients with atypical presentations, then I definitely think we will use plasma, CSF and PET and really go into and do advanced, advanced diagnostics uh, in these patients where the, 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 the picture is a bit more complex. And I, I, I'm very happy that we will have the possibility of doing this. And I think this is a good thing also for the imaging experts, for example, because they can't deal with all these patients with, with standard sort of Alzheimer's disease. Instead, I think one should uh, uh, save the PET, PET scanners then for, for, for the patients that might where one re really would need to look into the details of where in the brain the, the pathological changes are uh, and uh, if, uh, if that could help sorting out if the biomarker, if the pathological process is likely or not to cause the, the particular symptoms the patient has. So uh, that's how I see it. They are complementary, but I think that the plasma test could actually replace these more advanced uh, examinations in a rather significant number of patients in the future in clear-cut cases. Uh, one could then ask, is this a big group of patients who have gray zone results? And I would say that around 20 to 30 percent of the, the biomarker data we are looking at in, in the cohort studies are very close to a cut point, or perhaps that the tau and a beta changes are not uh, pointing in the exactly the same direction. So it, we, we talk about something like that, perhaps a fifth of, of the, of the um, uh, patients might need additional examinations by, by for example, CSF or PET. The reason for why CSF sampling has been so much easier in the Scandinavian countries it must be it must be historical somehow, and it must be linked to how neurologists uh, used um, uh, these tests. Um, there has been a cluster of, of uh, researchers uh, uh, in um, uh, Scandinavia that have been interested in how brain pathologies uh, of the neurodegenerative dementia is, are reflected in, in the biofluids. And we have also had uh, clusters of researchers developing ligands for PET studies in both Uppsala, Stockholm and, and um, Turku in Finland. And, uh, uh, this has also been seen uh, to some extent in Norway and Denmark. Uh, so um, th this could be one uh, reason that there have been clusters of researchers interested in this. The other aspect could be perhaps how the healthcare system is financed. So in Sweden and in uh, most, yeah, I think it's general to the Scandinavian countries, as a physician, you decide what the examinations you want to do on your patients. You don't have to involve uh, um, uh, an insurance company. You don't have to get approval to use the, the, the biomarkers you find the most important for your patient. 
and that has, and also when you order a CSF test, for example, it's not, uh, the, the costs are not counted, like you have to book a bed and have an anesthesiolo anesthesiologist at the house or anything like that. Instead, it is uh, a part of, of uh, uh, the practice you do as a physician and you don't charge spe specifically for it. Perhaps that also plays in a little bit. But I think now that, that when we look around the globe, the, the biomarkers are getting more and more available everywhere now. And, uh, and there is great research happening in, in uh, many European and American countries. And we see it in Asia and we see, see it in, in, in South America. And uh, last week I was in a meeting with um, low and middle income countries uh, uh, in a conference focused on brain uh, disorders and there are a couple of studies uh, starting up now uh, also in um, uh, some African countries to look at genetics and biomarker evidence of neurodegenerative dementias in the and then I could also examine how how they develop in if there is in the context of HIV and other um, comorbidities that we have very limited knowledge on and now in terms of brain aging so I think uh, this is uh, there might be a few historical reasons for why biomark research has been strong in Scandinavia, but um, I think uh, the, the world is catching up here definitely and perhaps also taking over.